What should I do about my under eye hollowness? I am upset over them and I really want to fix them. I've tried makeup and nothing seems to help. I am currently trying eye exercises to strengthen the muscles around. I hate the crease under my eye too. I'm hoping it doesn't get worse. Thank you for your question. You submitted a photo uh, descri and, and described in your question that you are dealing with an issue with under eye hollowness and that you've tried makeup which doesn't seem to be helping and you've been pursuing um, eye exercises and in addition you mentioned that you don't like the crease under your eye and there's a good photo of the of your eye and so uh, certainly I, I understand the uh, the origins of your concerns. Uh, just a little bit of background, I'm a board certified cosmetic surgeon and a fellowship trained oculofacial plastic and reconstructive surgeon. I've been in practice in Manhattan and Long Island for over 20 years and helping people with, uh, with under eye hollowness, puffy under eye bags and in general helping people look their best with their eyes is a central part of my practice uh, for, for this time and uh, I certainly deal with this problem every day in our office. So I'm going to help you a little bit first by get, giving you some perspective on the anatomic issues and also give you a little guidance as to the approaches that you've been taking. Now the majority of my patients who come with concerns of under eye hollowness fall into one of two categories, hereditary and uh, for a lot of younger people and age related when coming, uh, for people who are dealing with age changes, usually somewhere around the um, late 30s to 40s and, uh, and older. So when, when you get down to the real an anatomy of this area, you're basically dealing with this perception that a lot of people have that they look hollow because of like a, an a area of like a valley next to their eye where they feel that if there was some volume, things would look better. Now, this area is often referred to as the tear trough area. And the tear trough area uh, appearance is subject to essentially two factors. One is volume uh, in this space under the skin, and then there's the skin quality itself. A lot of times people who have dark under eye circles feel like the, the shadow of, the, uh, of the, both the hollowness as well as the darkness and the pigmentation of the skin as it appears to them is problematic. So when we're dealing with this issue, I also have to explain that if somebody has just hollowness in terms of the relevant anatomy and they have a discoloration, um, that's, that's certainly something that can be treated with some form of injectable treatment. If, however, they happen to have puffiness under their eyes, well then that's a different procedure, a different situation. But dealing with your situation, I would say that you can entertain the possibility of using a filler, such as a hyaluronic acid filler, something like Restylin. Restylane is in the softer side of the hyaluronic fis, um, filler uh, spectrum and it, I find it very useful in our practice because I'm able to place it fairly deep in this area and it blends very, very nicely. Now the, 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 uh, the, the limitations of using fillers in this area is that you have to redo them. Fillers eventually do break down. Now I can tell you from experience that it is interesting that a lot of times fillers in this area can last longer than would be anticipated based on the clinical trials used for um, their original indications for dermal filling. And so even though a product like Restylane can be, be anticipated to last um, six months, I've seen it last in patients for as long as one year and even, even longer. So, so, that's, so that, that's a consideration. Be also aware that when any procedure is done around the eye, there's always the possibility of a little bit of a bruise or, or some swelling. 
And so I always explain to my patients, for, uh, if they're the first time they're considering this and they're concerned about how they'll look the next day for work, etc., then I'll say, well, let's just do this procedure on a Friday and then you'll have the weekend just in case, worst case scenario, you have a little bruise or swelling, you can manage it. Now, as far as the aftercare and, and the, um, the follow-up, Usually there's not that much in terms of aftercare. If there's an elevation, you can apply a little um, gentle pressure to kind of massage things, but generally I don't find it's necessary. I see our patients in about two weeks and see how they look. And if they need more, there's always opportunity to add more. It's rare that's necessary. Basically with experience and expertise, it's, it's been relatively consistent. Occasionally we have to do a little enhancement. And then it comes to the subject of what to do about the shadow that's related more to the skin quality and skin coloration. Well, under eye dark circles is a whole separate topic, but I, just to describe what I do typically is that if there's any issue with the skin quality, whether it's skin thickness, skin color, or just the, 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 the crepiness of, of the skin, then I use platelet-rich plasma. Platelet-rich plasma is derived from your own blood and it's a concentration of the wound healing uh, growth factors necessary for when, like for example, when you have a cut. Now, the, the cells and the growth factors actually stimulate collagen, stimulate blood supply, and has remarkable uh, effect on improving skin quality. So we, we actually use platelet-rich plasma in multiple applications all over the body, and, and including acne scars and wrinkles and for um, scars in general. And, and so, so it's, it's a remarkable, versatile um, application of this product. But I'm not saying it's necessarily appropriate for you because this type of evaluation does requ would require physical examination to make that determination. You know, photography, regardless, you, know, you have to take into account lighting, the type of um, the, 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 the shadows and, and other things that, that we can't just judge so quickly and easily with, um, with a photo. However, this is, would be the modality, the, 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 thing, the thought pattern that I have in my practice. Basically, am I dealing with the volume loss? Am I dealing with skin quality? Am I dealing with a combination of both? So that being said, I think you need to learn more about this. Meet with qualified, um, experienced specialists and learn about your options. See what you're, if you're committed to this as a plan in terms of the long, the, the, long uh, the, the big picture and the long term. Um, you don't, you know, you, it's also nice to maybe consider trying it out because with an injectable filler, if you don't like it, eventually it goes away. And if it still is problematic, anything in the hyaluronic acid family can be dissolved with hyaluronidase of an enzyme. But as far as the eye exercise are concerned, I don't think you're going to do anything at all of any value with eye exercises. Uh, these muscles don't really get that thick or, or change the appearance of the eye that much. Uh, the exception could be in people who have a neurologic issue like benign essential blepharospasm. As far as the crease under the eye is concerned, that's more of an anatomic thing and I think it's really impractical necessarily to go chasing that specifically. I think you have to think, you know, in the aesthetic field, uh, very few things are really inexpensive. Most things do cost uh, at a minimum a few hundred dollars and then beyond that. So you always have to think of how much you're investing and what kind of result you are getting. And I think that something like that crease that you show in the photo, I just don't think it's worth um, uh, spending a lot of time, effort, and energy trying to uh, reduce it. It's just a normal anatomic um, variation. And so, you know, you can see maybe if a little bit of PRP or platelet-rich plasma helps that area, but I just don't think it's, it's something that's going to make a, be a dramatic change. Um, but, uh, but hollowing, that, there, there you can really make a difference. So I hope that was helpful. I wish you the best of luck. Thank you for your question.